picture that shows the hula hoop spinning. Oh, you know what that reminds me of? What? Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Vincent Van... who? Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Oh, you mean like that famous painting with the swirls in the sky? Yeah, he was famous for his ability to capture movement in all of his paintings. Ah, oh, that's right. That sounds like fun. Yeah, do you want to go ahead and try making some of our own? Sure, we can try. All right, let's go. Okay. You're not going to need that. Oh, yeah, right. This is the painting Starry Night painted by Vincent van Gogh in 1889. Vincent van Gogh was quoted saying, I often think that the night is more alive and more richly colored than the day. Whether it was night or day, van Gogh was known to make his paintings come to life. The way van Gogh made his artwork come to life was through creating movement in his pieces. Van Gogh created movement in his artwork through lines and brushstrokes. In his artwork, you will notice the wind blowing, clouds moving, the light from the sun or move radiating, all indicated by curvy or swirling lines. The goal of any good impressionist artist is to create feelings and to make a person feel as though they are there. Vincent van Gogh's artwork achieved that goal. Today we will be working on three artworks inspired by the famous artist Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. Van Gogh was famous for his ability to capture movement in his artwork. Movement is how the eye moves through the composition, leading the attention from the viewer from one aspect of work to another. It can create the illusion of action. For our first activity, we're gonna be making a color spiral. A color spiral gives us the illusion that all the colors are being pulled towards the center. The materials that we're gonna need for this artwork are cardstock, markers, crayons, a pencil, and an eraser. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay kids, to make our color spiral, the first thing that we're going to do is grab our cardstock and our pencil and we're going to go ahead and make a circle in the top left corner. We want to go ahead and leave some room, so we're going to leave about two inches from each side. So we're going to go ahead and just try to make our circle. It does not have to be perfect. Once we have our circle, we're going to go ahead and start making lines going outward from our circle. So it's gonna go st straight and then curve towards the ends. So we see that curve right here. We're gonna go ahead and do that multiple times. And then we're gonna try to keep it narrow. So our end that is near our circle should be narrow while our end towards the outer part of the paper should be wide. So we see that it's skinny and then it goes and gets thicker. And then we're gonna just keep doing this all the way around. All right, so now that I did all my lines on my spiral, I'm gonna go ahead and color each other section. So I have one section right here. I'm gonna go ahead and color that space in between those two lines. So this is my first section. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip the second one and then I go ahead and color the third one. So remember, we're gonna color one, skip one, color one, skip one, and it should look something like this. Once you're at this step, we're gonna go ahead and grab our pencil and we're gonna go ahead and erase those pencil markings that we made our circle. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our crayons and start coloring. So for each section, we're gonna use a different color. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my first section. I'm gonna turn my paper, make my first section green. Now I'm gonna 
go ahead and pick a different color and go all the way around. All right, guys, so this is what our color spiral turned out to be. We could see that the lines really help give the illusion that our colors are tunneling into our center of our circle. Go ahead and stay tuned for discussion and let's go ahead and move on to our next activity. Okay, so our second art piece is called Swirly Waves. As you can see, this picture creates movement by the swirls and the waves, makes it look like it's crashing or the waves are moving and also by the sun's rays that are radiant out. So in order to create this piece of art, we are gonna need some white paper cardstock, a permanent marker, a pencil of course, an eraser, and some oil pastels. All right, let's get started. So our first step is we're gonna place our sheet horizontal and we're gonna start to create our waves. Now, to make our waves, kind of estimate a third of the page. So it's be like right here. We'll make a big swirl for our wave. I'm gonna start coming out. Let's make a swirl. And then we'll make a second swirl, our second wave, kind of like in the middle of this big Start right here, come out, swirl, and then I'm going to come up with the line over here. This will be the end of the ocean or the water, just a little line. We're going to create some more waves down here, so I'd like to make a line this way, have it cur curve out again, and then some more lines. Let's do the bottom of this wave. So if you, if you feel comfortable drawing it, then we can erase this part after because this wave is in front of this wave. We can just go down, make a line, kind of curve it. Then we could erase it if you want. Okay, we'll make another, let's make one more wave. One more little swirl right here. You can add more lines to them to give it that illusion that they're moving. So we want to start off thick or wide and then go in more narrow to make it seem like all the lines are connecting right at the center. So let's do, eh, let's do one more line. Like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, just try your best. our water or end of the, the ocean right here so we want to make it a little thick and now we're gonna go on to the second part of this picture which is the little hills so I'm gonna start right here a little further up go up a little bit down then right here make a little curve they don't have to be perfect just make some little mountains or little hills. So, on the hills, we are going to be making some little more swirls, lines to give it that depth and dimension, okay? So we'll start off with the circle here. Pick a hill that you want, and we're gonna do like half little circles. All the way down. Want. Then we'll stop and go in a different direction. So let's see, here. Make sure you follow in the same direction. We'll put another one right here. Little half circles. See, and these two look like they're overlapping. So let me, I'm gonna go ahead and do, let's, maybe, let's see, maybe this one on top. Now we're gonna do our sun. So we're 
gonna start our sun on this um, edge of the paper, your right hand side. And we're gonna create a little half circle. Probably come like to the midway of the mountains or these hills, like halfway of your paper. So there I made my sun. And now we're gonna create the waves, uh, the rays, excuse me, the rays that are gonna radiate out. So to create the, the little sun rays, we're gonna start here and we're gonna measure them out all the way towards, they're gonna go out to the edge of the paper. So let's see if I can make one. Kind of spread them out. All right, so that's the basic um, concept. We have the waves, the mountains, the green hills, and the sun. Now the next step is to grab your permanent marker in black, and we're gonna outline the lines that we want to keep. And this is what it would look like once you're done. So do this one, okay? So from here, you would now grab your oil pastels and color it in. So for the waves, I want blue, different shades of blue. You can use light blue, dark blue, darken in some areas. You wanna have some green for the hills, different shades of green, and obviously for the sun, some yellow, reds, and oranges. So, do the wave. And you can use your fingers to kind of blend the colors in a little bit. Now for the hills, we're going to use different greens, maybe a lighter green. Let's see, let's start with this lighter green, see how it comes out. You want a different shade of green you can put a little um, different shade of green so we're gonna do that blend it out so then you're gonna color the hills green now for the sun sun's really interesting we'll do let me see I have orange I have reds I have yellows let's see we want to keep the red and the oranges the darker colors or we want to go over it really dark here towards the center of the sun because that's where the most of the heat is being held and then as it goes out the heat kind of radiates out so that means that the darker colors are going to be around the edges and in here and then lighter as we go out with it you can also put some orange in there and go throughout the race so I'm gonna color this and we'll see how it looks the lighter base so a lighter color so go ahead and color like for example the ocean the water color it with a light color and then you can always go in with a darker shade of blue see go in with a sh darker shade of blue and fill in where you want the dark areas to be and I found that was a lot easier also for the hills put some darker green I colored it all light green and then I went in with different shades of green or apply more pressure in the areas I wanted it to be darker and the sun as well so you see I only used a yellow and red and when I blended them out after it created that little the orange that you see in the sun so I hope you guys like this it creates movement as the waves are crashing and the sun's radiating out so this was very fun and let's go on to our last and final art piece. all right guys so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to making our swirly tree, which is our last activity. 
And for this activity, you're gonna need a piece of cardstock, oil pastels, a pencil, a marker, a permanent marker, and an eraser. Now let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start by making our tree. So we want to go ahead and start by drawing our tree. So you could go ahead and make this however uh, you want in size. I'm just making it like a medium sized tree. It's gonna take less than half of my whole sheet. And then I'm doing my branch up. I'm just going like this. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side as well. So it's my branches and my roots. They kind of open up to the bottom, so I'm making it wide at the bottom. And now I'm going to go ahead and open it up a little bit make a couple of thick branches right here remember you guys could also uh, erase as you go so whatever marks you don't want you could go ahead and erase those so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep playing with my tree see how I want it to look So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my permanent marker. I'm gonna go ahead and start at the top and work my way down. So those thin branches, I'm just doing a simple line. I'm not gonna go ahead and go over it more than once. Just like that, we see that the branches open up and become wider. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade in those spots. So now that we went ahead and we shaded in our tree, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our swirls. So one of the key things when thinking about making our swirls is that whatever direction our branches open up to, we're gonna go ahead and pretend that that's the direction that we're gonna go ahead and make our swirl. We want that so that it will make our image look like if the swirls are pulling our tree outward. So like this, branches opening down, so we're gonna go ahead and do a swirl going down in that direction. And right here, the shape of the tree is rising up, so we're gonna go ahead and make a swirl going in that direction as well. And now we're gonna go ahead and use our pastels. So I'm gonna go ahead and do various different colors in each corner. One corner is gonna be blue, so I'm gonna go ahead and assign that color to this corner. This one's gonna be red. I'm gonna go ahead and make this green. So I'm working with darker colors towards the edge um, because I'm gonna go ahead and make my picture look like if it's lighter from the center and darker as it opens up. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my purple. And remember, if you don't have a color that's dark enough, you could always blend in a little bit of black just to darken that in. For instance, I have this corner that I want it to be a dark purple. So I'm going to go ahead and shade this in as much as I can uh, with purple. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of black. So for instance, right here, I wanted a darker purple. So I'm gonna just blend that in. And I get that dark purple. And you could do this as many times as it's necessary. 
So like I see a couple of white spots, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more purple and a little bit more black. Now for our swirls, we're gonna go ahead and use multiple shades of the same color. So if I want a blue swirl, I'm gonna go ahead and use the light blue first. For instance, right here, I'm gonna go ahead and make one. So I'm gonna have my light blue first, and that's gonna be the inner portion of my swirl. Remember to be generous with your pastels. The more pigment that you lay down, the easier it is to work with. So that's the basic shape of my swirl. And if I want a little bit of a darker color or different shades, I'll put multiple different shades of blue just so that it gives it more depth to the image. So I'm just laying. So try to use various uh, colors of the same, various shades of the same color. So you could have um, a more visible swirl. process wherever I want my swirls. Remember they're going to be along the sides of my tree. spiral tree turned out we can see how movement is being used to give us the illusion that the spirals are spinning it is also creating the action that the tree is being stretched out by those spirals okay so let's go ahead and recap for today's activity we went ahead and made three artworks that were inspired by the artist Vincent van Gogh our first artwork was a color spiral our second art piece was swirly waves. And our third and final art piece was a swirly tree. Do you guys happen to remember how it is that we captured movement in our art pieces? So in our first art piece, we went ahead and made wavy lines to make the illusion that all the colors are being pulled into the center of our circle. In our second painting, we went ahead and made swirly waves with various colors and tones to give us the illusion that we have color and we have the reflection of the sun in our waves. We also added different colors to our sun, to our rays, to give us the illusion that it is being pulled. Okay, so for our swirly tree, we went ahead and made a couple of spirals all around our tree in the direction that our tree opens up, giving us the illusion that it is being stretched out. We also went ahead and used various shades of the same color to make our swirls stand out. So what did you like the most about your artwork? If you did go ahead and try this activity, go ahead and send any pictures or videos to map at cityofmontclair.org. That's map at cityofmontclair.org. Bye!